of the global wine industry and you may think immediately France, California, South Africa, Chile. However, one of the oldest wine industries in the world is to be found in the Lebanon. The country's civil war caused a lot of destruction for the sector. Well, now there is a revival of interest and our next guest knows all about that. He's the boss and head of winemaker of Domaine de Tourelle. Now, the company was founded way back in 1868 by a French engineer, making it the oldest winery in the country. It's thriving, producing 300,000 bottles of wine a day and 350 bottles of local alcoholic drink, Arak. Let's just clarify that. 300,000 bottles a year. Sorry, my apologies. Uh, just think about this. The Syrian war is raging, raging just 20 kilometres away. Now... Let's not rely on Mills to queue anymore. He's obviously not telling us the right things. We've got the man in charge here, Ozi Isa, who is from uh, your head winemaker, is that correct? But there's two families that run this company now, yeah. and you are from one of those families. Yeah, we are, we are two families running the winery. We, ha we are a committee of uh, four uh, uh, young uh, team uh, from old from the 30s, so we're considered to be the youngest team in Lebanon running the oldest winery in the region. I bet you'd love to be making 300,000 of bottles of wine a day, yeah, wouldn't I would, you? I would, be, I would be the leader <laughs> worldwide. <laughs> I would be you'd the leader be, worldwide. You'd yeah. be taking over. Um, it's quite an interesting story, isn't it? It goes back many, many years with uh, the French influence at the beginning, but then now it's, it's you know, purely a, a Lebanon you know, wine grown by two Lebanon, Lebanese families, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, the menu Tourelle is, uh, is a wine that has, that was the first winery to, to launch a bottle, a ready bottle to the market, because at that time uh, there was monk, uh, wines producing for the monks in Lebanon. So the first commercial winery to produce a ready bottle to, uh, to be sold in the market was from the menu Tourelle. Today we are, we are putting Lebanon back on the map by producing high quality of wines from the great terroir we have in Lebanon and most of the people everywhere in the world they don't know that Lebanon has wine so well that's exactly what I was going to ask you being in Lebanon it's not a traditional wine making uh, uh, region it's not some somewhere that people think of so what specific challenges do you face being based in Lebanon I mean uh, it's it's a, it's a fabulous work because uh, you you are really taking something exciting something sexy to the world so tell them listen you know uh, all the negative things maybe about that, about this region, but come on, taste some good wines, taste some some great potential we produce in Lebanon. So this is what what we are really trying to make, and uh, and we're succeeding really. We are in seventeen countries today. Your vineyards, uh, where you are, is eight kilometers away from an enormous refugee camp, isn't exactly. it? Full of Syrian yes. uh, refugees. You are very keenly aware of the one point five million Syrian refugees in Lebanon. I mean, your population is over four million. Is that yeah, correct? Exactly. What impact does that have, if any impact, on what you do? I mean, security impact, but uh, globally, I mean, that's fine. I mean, we are the closest uh, country to Syria, so we are the number one responsible country to solve their problems. I mean, if they uh, if they want a shelter, we're, we're ready to, to cope with this. There is no direct uh, impact on, 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 uh, on our business, exactly. But, uh, of course, on the long run, it, will, it might be catastrophic. You can't actually employ any of these refugees, can no, you? Because no. they haven't been processed, they're not in, in, in that sort of position. Yeah, no. um, but you do, uh, Syria is one of your main markets. Yeah. You export to Syria. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we export uh, lots of our Iraq as well, because uh, nowadays Syria, big quality industries are not are down. So they stop producing, so they are importing lots of uh, niche products from Lebanon. Now, tell me about your Iraq. Firstly, clear up, how many bottles of Arak do you produce a year? <laughs> and then tell me about the Anasis. Yeah, we produce 300,000 bottles of Arak per year. We are the leader in the market, uh, in, the niche pro in the niche category. Uh, we produce Arak from distillation. We use anisids. Since long time, uh, the anisids was produced. It's a cocktail, isn't it? It's, a, it's in the spirit. We use it for the cocktails as well. But I mean, the Lebanese spirit, uh, uh, the Lebanese national spirit is the Arak. Which but you've had to start growing your own anisids. Because of the problem happening in Syria, two years ago I launched my new pro, uh, plantation program in Baalbek region and uh, last year we had the first produce and it was amazing, amazing, amazing. And uh, I think we will divert to Lebanese uh, analysis very soon and I hope that we will play this uh, we will play the ro a role of diverting anesthesia plantation from Syria to Lebanon. Well, we shall keep an eye 
and what you're up to is actually sure. Thanks for coming in. It's been Thank really, you very really much. fascinating. And I know your wife's watching us, isn't she, in Lebanon? She's watching me in yeah, with my Do you kids. Want to say hi. Hi, Ruba. The whole family is tuning <laughs> yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, All right, yeah. thanks for coming Thank on. It's been good to have you.